Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is what looks to be a classic style game. It's called Chaos Kingdoms by Dreaming Dragon Games, and it's for one to five players. It takes about, oh, I'd say, an hour to two hours to play the game, and it's for ages 12 and up. In the game Chaos Kingdoms, you're going to be playing as a faction and a leader, and you'll be putting cities down on the board, and you'll be trying to fight Jabberwock as well as finding minions and allies and all that kind of thing. It feels a little bit like Talisman as far as going around the board and events popping up and things happening. You can fight your opponents and uh, there's multiple different ways to win, whether it is to gather the Jabberwockies or be the last person standing or build the all, all, your, all your cities, uh, which we'll talk about down below. Uh, it has an interesting stylized artwork with all the different cards and whatnot. Let's go ahead and show you all the contents of the game and everything included as well as the starting setup for the game Chaos Kingdoms. So here we we have the game Chaos Kingdoms and pretty much everything included. Of course, you're going to get the box as well. Uh, this is the player manual for the rules of the game and this is going to be the lore book. It comes with all the different artwork and of course it comes with all the explanation of all the different characters and all the different uh, factions and whatnot. So you get a little bit of story in with the game as well. This is the board of the game and the board is going to come with some different aspects. These are the little uh, different uh, encounter areas here, these guys here. And the ones with these circles here are going to be cities, which you're going to be trying to take over. Uh, you're going to get different factions, and these are all the different faction tokens that are going to amount to your cities, uh, as well as a faction token that is basically your character moving around the board. Two six-sided die, and then a bunch of tokens here. There is going to be the gold, which is for attack when you get it through uh, experience. Red attack, which is when you get it through cards. Uh, the blue over here, or green over here, sorry, is going to be HP. And then blue is experience, and you can turn that into uh, attack throughout the game, which is important because that's what you need to beat the game. There's three different victory conditions. So over here, you're going to be choosing your factions, and the first player will start off and take a faction from here. They'll also then choose any character they want. There's a ton of different characters in the game. Maybe they'll go ahead and pick, oh, I don't know, somebody. How about this guy? This guy here. And then after that, they're going to go ahead and take a stat card along with their faction tokens and their faction icon. And everybody's going to start off with five HP on their little stat card here. Uh, that's unless it's changed, but due to one of these cards here. And then you're going to add attack if any of your abilities say so. For instance, this uh, mad unicorn uh, faction is going to start with three additional attack, which is pretty sweet. And then this character has a special ability to attack heroes within four hexes. That's cool, it has a solo mode variant as well. You're gonna set these off to the side, and then you're going to go ahead and place your faction on the board as long as it's five spaces away from anybody else. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and let's put this guy here, nice and easy. And then you can take a Jabberwocky as well, and the same rules apply. It has to be five spaces away from any character, including yourself. Maybe we'll put this guy right here. It also can't be on one of these hexes uh, that already has a city or an encounter space. And every player is going to do that as well, so I'll just go ahead and select a couple other ones just to show you how a board setup would look. Something like that, along with the Jabberwockies. Has to be five hexes away from everybody, so that sounds about right there. Okay. Um, and then you pretty much have the board set up. Everybody's going to have their factions and their characters. They're all going to have one of their stat cards. And then the loot and encounter cards, which are the last things in the game, are going to be set aside. Loot are what you gain when you defeat monsters, and encounters are uh, either uh, bad guys or allies that you're going to have to either fight or convince to help you throughout the game. And uh, then you're pretty much ready to go after everybody is set up and the board is placed. All right, let's come up and talk about turns. So once the board is set up, everybody's got all of their faction characters down on the board, along with all the Jabberwockies. The first player is going to start, and they're going to be using movement by rolling a d6. You roll that, and then you move move your movement speed based on the die number. Now, if you land in a water space, you can only move one space through it. It basically slows your movement down to a crawl, so be aware of that. There's basically different areas on the board you can land on. There's going to be encounter spaces, there's going to be non-encounter spaces, or basically blank spaces, which if you roll a six on them, you can still do an encounter if you'd like. And you can also go on a city space and fight a Jabberwocky. When you're in a city space, you're either going to be able to fight an opponent's city, fight a basic city that's just somebody, some random faction, or uh, you'll have the ability, if it's already your city space, to attempt to put a shrine on there by using experience, or uh, trade, sell, 
and do other things with your experience points. Uh, if it's somebody else's space and it's their city and you don't want to fight it, but you actually want to trade or sell or heal or something like that, you can ask permission. If they give you permission, you can actually go on their space. If not, then you have to go ahead and do something else. If you defeat all the Jabberwockies and across the board they have different uh, power, then you can go ahead and try and do that victory condition. Another one is going to simply be defeating all the other players, being the last person standing. And then another one is putting shrines on all your cities. In that case, you would win as well. After you've gone ahead and moved and done one of your encounters or actions of some sort, you're going to pass your turn and the next player is going to get to go. Uh, during an encounter, it's usually going to be a battle and you're going to have a card like this that comes up, like this golden homunculus. It'll have an attack value and plus a d6 roll. You'll have your attack value plus a d6 roll. Both will roll. The person with the highest attack value wins. If you win, you get the experience and anything that says on the bottom, as well as engaging any of the combat of, or any of the cards that have something to do with combat. This one says you do not defeat the homunculus in battle. If you don't, you have to discard a loot card. So it can have some negative effects or bonus effects. There's also cards that are like allies that can kind of try and help you. You can choose to fight them instead. Um, and that's pretty much the idea of the game. Moving around the board, trying to defeat the homunculuses, you go on these quests. You have kind of an open range of things that you can go ahead and do in this classic style game. Uh, let's go ahead and look down below and I'll show you a couple turns and how it functions and then we'll come up and talk about it. So here we are back to the Chaos Kingdom board and everything included along with the setup for the game. Let's go ahead and talk about the characters up here. This guy over here has his plus three uh, attack and he also has uh, attacking heroes within four spaces so he has kind of an arrange ability. This one over here is a teleport during the move phase. He can move up to eight hexes as well as the fact that for any attack uh, you can roll 2d6 and choose the highest as opposed to just rolling one. This guy here is interesting. Right now he's got plus two HP on top of his normal five along with the fact that he can roll a d6 if he loses a fight and on a four or six he loses four to six he loses no hp pretty solid uh, this one over here is plus four to attacking cities and uh this character is able to summon undead minions per, for double the experience from the graveyard and allowing him to utilize them for their attack you can only have two minions though however everybody has their stat pool all set up along with the bonus two hp and the bonus uh, attack for this guy and they're ready to go well, let's go ahead and start with this one over here which is the bat faction which is right here in the middle and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and roll a die. So we'll roll a die, see what we get. We got a one. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move to the space over here, the Weeping Gate. That's an encounter space, which we'll go ahead and draw one of these cards here. And we have Skeeta the Shrieker, and it has some kind of flavor text there. It's zero attack. So that's a good start. They're both gonna roll. This is for the character, and this is for the uh, minion. <laughs> that's a tie. So I think you probably have to re-roll the dice here or something like that. Or in fact, I think if you just don't beat her, you just lose, I think is what actually happens. In, in this case, uh, you're basically, basically going to take one damage. If you were to have beaten her, you would have gained three experience. But uh, lo and behold, not the case. So he's going to just lose a life. This character is then going to go to the encounter space. Uh, and then he's going to end his turn. Next faction is the bees. The bees knees is going to go ahead and choose to move from here. Uh, rolling the die. What do we got here? A five much much nicer roll uh one two three four and then we stop there in an encounter space and we're gonna meet somebody interesting like poke poke the stone giant uh plus one attack so this is for the character here a one oh no and a four from poke poke four plus one is five that's also gonna leave this guy uh, in trouble but he does get a chance to dodge the attack and he does so he gets to keep his health and this character once again goes. Uh, the next character over here is going to be uh, the beautiful Death, and she's going to get to move her movement, which is three, one, and two. There's a city if she wants, or she can go three over here. And when you're at the city, you can heal or trade and all the other good stuff. We'll just go over here and roll the die. If it's a six, we get an encounter. If it's not, then we pass. And finally, the last player over here is the Unicorn Faction. Let's see how far they can go. They can move six spots. Spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Encounter space. What we got here? This is the homunculus with three attack and a die roll. He also has three attack and a die roll. And four, five. This guy wins again. Now, if he won, he would actually gonna go ahead and take a loot card if this character had one, which he doesn't. And also, we would take a damage here from the uh, health. And let's just say this was reversed. In which case, this character would win. And uh, uh, 
you would get six experience. So you take the experience and put it in your little experience pool here. And you'd also get a piece of loot. These loots do different things and they slowly increase or quickly increase. This is one of the really good ones. Uh, your damage. This is plus four attack. This is flying. So the ability to move over the different hexes. And um, it says you can move up to six hexes. That's pretty sweet. And you would actually put it in front of you. Uh, there is a limit to certain uh, items that you can have in front of you. Uh, and you continue to play the game. So this character would get that. This guy would then go and be discarded. And the next player would continue to go. And that's the basic idea of the game, moving around the board. Now, let's say the bat character wanted to fight this, uh, this city here. The city would actually get a 5 plus a die roll. So it's dangerous to go ahead and fight a city uh, to begin with because you don't have any bonuses and whatnot so maybe that's not a good idea but this guy actually has a plus four to fighting cities so in this case wow he's a terrible roller let's say he rolled a six <laughs> and he rolled a three he's got a plus four so that's five and three is eight and six and four is nine so in this case he would win if he actually did roll that and then you'd he'd be able to actually take his faction token and place it on that city and uh, he could use experience, provided he had enough, for, uh, based on the number of attacks. I think he has to have about 20 attack. And if he had 10 experience, he could go ahead and uh, utilize that to put a shrine on. And when you put a shrine on, you do that. That would be one step closer to victory if he put all of his tokens down on all the different cities on the board. That would be how he would win the game. So that's one way that a player can win. Um, another thing to do is there are these Jabberwockies. And as you see, there's a 25, a 15, a 10, and a 20. And this is kind of the catch-up mechanic in the game. If you go over to these guys here and you want to fight them, he's got a plus 15 plus a die roll. And you'll be utilizing your attack plus a die roll. If you could knock this guy out and then all the rest of them collecting the Jabberwocky tokens, you can win the game that way and the final way is by attacking players if you come across another player and you wish to fight them you guys can simply both roll and uh depending on who had the bonuses of the highest uh, that player would uh would win the other player would take damage if you go to zero hp you're actually going to be booted out of the game you're done and you have lost and it is a player game of elimination that's another way to win of course and you can utilize any special items or magical powers that you may have in the game and that's the basic idea of the game chaos kingdoms let's come up and talk about the loot cards more of the encounters and then what i think about the game so chaos kingdoms and any uh, caveats I may have. Well, one of them is that once you control a city with a shrine, no one can attack it. Players can do initiate combat just like you would encounter space. And also when you're fighting another player's city that doesn't have a shrine on it, you can attack it and it'll have a 10 bonus and a die roll as opposed to a five on a basic city. All right, so that's basically it. And let's talk about the art. Well, the first thing is you're going to have two different styles of art, it seems like. You're going to have the symbolization artwork here, which is pretty good. I like this with just basically some kind of uh, a wilderness background. And then you have these like real life character artwork designs. I'm curious as to how the art is going to look like at the end. Um, I feel like it's a bunch of different artists and it's noticeable the difference between them all, even the board itself. Uh, personally, it's... <laughs> I don't much care for this type of artwork, but I do like the artwork on the board itself. It reminds me of that classical style talisman uh, looking feel to it. It has that RPG nature. Uh, I do like that, but some of the other ones I'm like, eh, not really. Um, the items themselves can be very, very, very powerful and can, or could be like not very powerful at all. It's kind of a, a, a grab and go and just whatever you might get is gonna either benefit you or not. Moving around the board, there's one encounter deck and that deck is gonna have powerful monsters, uh, powerful followers and allies, or really wimpy, really doofy ones that are not going to help you. Um, what I would rather see in this game is multiple decks depending on the amount of attack value that you have, and then you can choose between those decks, allowing you the ability to kind of gamble or push your luck when fighting spaces. Uh, in this case, you know, if I've got a character with 20 attack and I fight an, an, a hobgoblin with one plus, you know, plus a die roll, it's an instant win and you don't get much. Whereas opposed to if I have five attack and I have to fight a dragon with 20 attack, I'm guaranteed to lose. And it's just so random. To remove that randomness in this game, I'd like to see multiple decks uh, regarding the different encounters on the board. The Jabberwockies are cool. I like the fact that you can go ahead and th that's a secondary win condition or second a uh, second way to win the game. Um, and that does bring some fruit out in the game. Uh, you're like, oh, well, I, I'm not going to be able to win via the shrines. I'm too far behind, so I'm going to go on the quest to defeat the driver walkies. I have enough one-shot items that will allow me to do that. So I like that. The next way of uh, winning the game is player elimination. In a longer player game like this, I do not like player elimination. I straight up do not like it. What I would actually think would be better is if you defeat a player, you gain a token or something like that. Maybe that player has to respawn. They lose something and you gain something. 
and then if you defeat enough players or all of the players or something like that, that would be a way to win the game. I think that would be a better way of doing it. That way it allows everybody to continue playing the game up until the very end, and you're still going to have that player combat way. It's another way of fighting. Instead of having the Jabberwockies, you can use player combat in that way. So that could be something to think about. Whether or not uh, you, choose, you guys choose to use that is up to you, I suppose. Um, uh, but overall, it's a cool little classic style game. It has some interesting elements to it. I like the board. I like the cards. I like the characters. Some of them are really cool, really powerful. Some of them are not so powerful. Some of them make you do some RPing. So it's all kind of like just crazy out there. Um, if you like those old style RPG games and you want to just move around the board and encounter certain things, if you enjoy the fact that the game has a bunch of different lore to it, a bunch of different characters, it might be something for you. It really will just depend for me on what it looks like on the Kickstarter, how all the art is put together and whatnot. Um, but overall, I am I'm, I'm, I'm a little under the level with this one just because I'd like to see a little less randomness. But the choice is yours. You can look it up in the description below. It'll be on Kickstarter very shortly if it's not already up there. And decide for yourself whether you want to pick up the game Chaos Kingdoms currently or soon to be or previously on Kickstarter. All right, let's go to the outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check it out for more videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Chaos Kingdoms in the description below for those RPG style games of, uh, of the past with some modern mechanics and some crazy different objectives and uh, adventures. <laughs> also, go ahead and check out our website, Unfiltered Gamer. And, and, some more. and our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geeks they give away tons of great stuff and i do appreciate uh, seeing all their cool blogs up there all right guys let's talk about you this time as always i look forward to hunting the jabberwockies with you next time <laughs> <laughs>